Okay, welcome to CSS. This video is going to talk about how you can add CSS to a web page, what CSS is, and, and how you can write it. So CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. This is how you change the appearance of your web page. In the HTML itself, you're writing tags like header, h1, main, h2, paragraph. These explain what the information is. So the browser knows how to read HTML and knows how to render it, and it's got some default styling that it applies. So by default, an H1 tag is bigger than an H2 tag. The browser has these styles, and these styles are CSS. That's how they are uh, written. Now, we can write our own CSS. So we can take the default styles that the browser is applying and we can change anything that we want. We can move things around on the page, change colors, add background images, add borders, whatever we want. Anything you can imagine, you can pretty much do with CSS. You can even add animations in. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you the four different ways that you can actually attach some CSS to a web page. So first of all, the one that you're never going to use. This is an attribute that you can add into any HTML element. It's called the style attribute and inside of here you can write CSS. CSS declarations are made up of two parts. There's a property and a value. So as an example, if I wanted to change the color of this text in this H1 tag, I can write color and it is the American spelling of the word color. Color, colon, and then a value. Now there's a whole bunch of named colors here and we can use those. That's a good start. So let's say chartreuse. There we are. Now I have this color applied to this property for this H1 element. If I want to add another style attribute, I can do that here. And let's say I'm going to increase the font size. So font size is going to be, let's say 48 pixels. So I've made the text bigger, I've changed the color. I could have put both of these properties together in the same thing. So inside the same attribute, if I remove it from here, I can place it inside of here with a semicolon in between them. Now the order that I put the properties doesn't matter as long as they're in pairs, name, value, name, value. Now you can see, if I wanted to add a lot of properties, this is gonna get quite cumbersome. And if I've got these on all of the elements, if I ever needed to go back and edit something or ch make a bunch of changes on the page, this is going to be a huge pain in the ass to do. So that's why we don't use these. These are known as inline styles. They're great for testing. If you want to experiment, if you want to figure out what something would look like, this is a great quick way to do that. But we don't want to do this as a best practice. So I will leave one in there just as a reference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you embedded styles now. So this is slightly better. I create a style tag up inside the head, so it must be inside the head element. There's a style element and inside here I can add those properties. Problem is now I don't know what these are applying to and they're not being applied to anything on the page. So I'm going to bundle them together make sure I've got a semicolon after each one, I'm going to put a set of curly braces around them. So all together, this is a style. Tab that over, make it a little bit easier to read, and I can create more. I can create, lo oops. I can create lots of these like this. And let's say I have another one which is going to be 12 pixels and purple, or Rebecca purple, there we go. So I've got two different styles here. I can apply these to anything on the page, but the way I do it is by in front of the opening curly brace, I will put either a tag, so I can have a tag name, or I can have an ID. If something on my page has an ID, like let's say the main element has an ID, or there's an attribute called class. IDs and class are very similar. It's just slightly different the way we write them up here. So let's call this uh, Bob. The name's not important. Up here, if I want to apply this to my H1 element, 
I would put H1 in front of it. And there we are. The H1 is now getting this font size and this color being applied to it. If I want to apply this to all of my paragraphs, I can put a P in front of it. And now this 12 pixel Rebecca Purple, this is applied to every paragraph on the page. So these, these are tag styles and, or element styles, whichever you prefer. These are kind of like your defaults. You would start with these and say, okay, all my H1 tags are going to get this. All of my paragraph tags are going to get this. All of my anchor tags are going to get this. Then you can start looking at IDs or classes. Main, we'll say as an example, if I want to target something with the ID main, I put a hash mark or pound sign, an octothorpe in front of it. This means all IDs that are main. Now the thing about IDs is they're supposed to be unique. It's like a name. Only one thing on the page can have the name main. So I can have multiple mains. I can have one on every page in my website, but per page, on each page, there can only be one ID called main. So I will put in a border. Now a border is actually a shorthand property. This gets three values. It's going to get a width, it's going to get a style, and it's going to get a color. So let's say red. There we are. There are three other properties. There's a border hyphen width, a border hyphen style, and a border hyphen color. So you can do the properties individually, or this is a shorthand one where I can write all three values. Okay, great. So we've got an ID. We've got two tag styles, two element styles. Um, I can put a class style in here as well. So the only thing on the page with the class Bob is this first paragraph right here. If I want to target a class, what I do is I put a period in front of the name. So let's put a padding of 20 pixels. There we go. So you notice the extra space here and above and below. The difference between tags and IDs, like I can put multiple properties in here. Let's say font family is going to be cursive for everything inside of main. And then the um, font family for everything with the class Bob, uh, let's say monospace. There we are. So this is inside main. It's getting the cursive. This is getting cursive. This is getting cursive. But this has got the class Bob, and it's overwriting it. And the reason it's overwriting it is the main styles are applied to this element. Bob is inside of that. So the ones on the outside get applied first, and then the ones that are closer to the actual element get applied after. It doesn't matter what order I've written them here. What matters is which style is closer to what I'm actually styling. This has got Bob, so it's going to get that style. If I came up here, I can add the class Bob to this. So now it has the monospace 20 pixel. I can add it to the third paragraph as well. This is the big difference between IDs and classes. Classes can be reused. Okay, so we've created a thoroughly hideous web page here, but we've created some styles. So these are embedded styles. Remember, we also had, <coughs> pardon me, inline styles. The third way we can do this is by having an external style sheet. This is really what you're going to do as a best practice. External style sheets. You take all of the CSS, you put it into an external file, and then you link to it. So if I take all this and I remove it from the web page, and I'm going to go over to a page that I've created inside the same directory called sample.css, and I'm going to paste it inside of here. Fix my tabs. There we are. So these styles are now inside of sample.css. Nothing's appearing on my page because I haven't connected the two. I can create a link, and the relationship between what I'm about to link and the HTML file is stylesheet. href is sample.css. There we are. Now the styles are back.
So as soon as you create a link tag, this will connect the CSS file to the HTML and the browser will automatically render it. As soon as I make a change inside of here, if I change the color of this border, um, let's uh, actually let's change the font family from cursive to serif. There we are. So this is the serif font. This is a serif font. If I go sans serif, then this is changed to sans serif. This is changed to sans serif. Um, some properties, like font family, you're allowed to give multiple values. So I can give a list of potential fonts, a list, a list of possible fonts that I want to apply to everything inside of main. And the browser will read from left to right and it will apply the first one that it has access to. So it checks your computer. Do I have this font? Do I have this one? Do I have this one? When it finds one that it has, that's the one that it applies. And we just create a big comma separated list. So if I had one called Ricardo, which I don't, it's not going to change the page. If I have one called Ariel, it does change the page. So let's misspell this. So we're going to watch this subheading. And there's a slight change there. If I put the I, you can see there's a slight change. If we put another one in front of here, Helvetica. As soon as I put the comma, let's watch. Uh, Verdana. There we go. That's a much more useful change. So Verdana X. Now it's showing Arial. This is the Arial font. Remove it. Now this is Verdana. So a comma separated list means try to apply the first thing in this list that you know what it is. This is a generic fallback one. If all three properties are being applied, there's spaces in between. If it's a selection from a list, there's commas in between. And that's a common thing with CSS. Okay, one last way that you can attach CSS. So I have my HTML. I've got a link tag here. I could, if I wanted, create another link tag pointing to another file. Made some slight changes to my page. So if I change that, you can see there it is. And if I finish the name, there we go. You can see that there is a change happening with this main.css. You can link as many CSS files as you want using separate link tags. Alternatively, so instead of doing all this, one other way that we can attach an external style sheet is from inside of here. There is an at rule, it's called at import. And then we write URL and inside the parentheses, we put the name of the file that we're importing. So I'm going to write main.css. These are in the same folder, so I just have to put the, the file name. I don't have to put a path or anything. So watch this page, watch the padding around here. As I put in main.css, there we go. Not sure why it lost all the styling. I guess it was unhappy about uh, loading this, got a 404 error, and then it just stopped doing all the CSS because this failed, so it didn't do any of it. All right, so we have external style sheets which can be attached with a link tag or with at import from inside of a CSS or if you want you can have a style tag and inside of here you could say at import URL main.css this would work as well so with an at import or with a link tag you can connect to an external style sheet following that you can do embedded styles that's with the style attribute, or you can do inline styles. The embedded and the inline are good for testing. The external is what you want to do on your final version, your production website. That's the one you want to have external styles with. All right, so I hope that gives you enough to get started. Uh, if you're looking for some websites, the MDN uh, Mozilla Developer Network website has great references for all the CSS properties. Or there's another website called CSS Tricks. I'll put links to both of them in the comments for you to follow. All right, any questions? Leave them in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.